Hey everybody, Hank B here with Josh T, and we are Our Two Cents Media. I wanted to hold off that time, let you say it, because I feel like sometimes I might talk over you on that, but I was trying to, you know, share the love. So, we know we're a couple days late on the uh, review for The Mandalorian. I partially will take blame for that, because I went on a little vacation, and my brain totally shut off what day every day was. Um, so, it's been really like, I'm not even sure what today is, to tell you the truth. So, getting into this, we're talking about, I believe it's episode 6, I don't do that, <laughs> episode 6, season 3 <laughs> of The Mandalorian. I have actually never done that. Um, I haven't either. So, I mean, even with the legality, uh, where we work, it's still not allowed because of they follow federal statute. Not that anybody asked, but uh, talking about Mandalorian, what did you think of the episode? I thought it was kind of cool. You know, it was a... Uh... It was a, it was still Mandalorian, and I thought the whole Bo-Katan, you know, fight for leadership thing was cool, even though that, that came later in the episode, and she uh, w did reclaim her Darksaber, uh, the cameos with Jack Black and the Doc from Back to the Future, which I forget his name already, and I had it remembered. What? Christopher Lloyd? That guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah that guy. And then, um... What is it? The I thought the the whole thing was pretty cool. You know, they they go into a whole different planet that kind of I guess settled fast and built fast and quick. Uh, looks like it's like ages new, or wait, no, it's ages old and like, but it's very new for them and it's huge. Um, and the whole thing runs off of droids, which uh, Mando hates, and he's. I just thought it was funny, you know, that like, hey, help us with this droid problem. So he's going around, he's kicking them and stuff, and I thought that was hilarious. And then uh, I just I just thought it was I'm, like I'm not sure if it's like every three out of f two out of five droids or something that has like uh, their code all tweaked or something. But I just kind of thought it was weird that you know on his third kick the that one was the one that you know. Ended up being a rogue one out of like hundreds that are out there, um, but I mean it did. It, everything moved on pretty quick. It wasn't like, oh, here's a new world city. We're gonna sit in here and watch it for an hour, and then nothing happened, and then it's just gonna be boring. Like it was, it was, it was something that was entertaining the whole time. At least it was for me. The effects were cool, um, and then um, what is it? I, f I, I don't know. I kind of felt like uh, Jack Black's role was too fancy for him. I'm not sure if you got that vibe too, but um, I, I it was good to see him in there. But like I, ju I just felt like that was too fancy of a role for a uh, Jack Black. It does kind of fit uh, the background of him because I mean he was a former Imperial, uh, I believe, officer. So it. Almost as perfect casting, if that's what you're looking for. Somebody who's dressing up beyond what their normal station would be. So, I mean, that kind of that, that part was kind of good. And, like, to answer your question about the, techno the rise of the technology there, like they even said, since we don't have soldiers, we could funnel everything into, you know, the city and increasing, you know, production and stuff like that. So, it is kind of an interesting idea of how they went about their whole thing. I did lose you on camera. Hopefully, we're still recording. Um, yeah, hopefully. Nope, you're back. Okay. So, um, uh, I honestly did not care for the episode that much. Yeah. Um, I, I felt like I was watching it. I felt like I was playing a D and D game where the G the GM or the game master is forcing you to go a certain route and you're like, no, I want to check out the building, but you got to jump through all these goddamn hoops before you can even do what you want to do. I mean, it makes kind of sense at the same time, but at the same time, it's like, okay, fuck, what do we have to do now? And, like, yeah. I was really put off by that feeling. Um, there, It was awesome seeing the couple cameos, and I love the throwback to the Separatists and mentioning uh, Count Dooku. I mean, I love that when they do that stuff, because it really does throw in um, connecting elements without having to rely... On, like, say, Luke Skywalker or R2 popping up in every episode to remind you it's Star Wars. They're reminding you it's Star Wars, 
you know, in the Star Wars universe, just by simply mentioning a name, and this is names that would be known, you know, known around. Everybody would know Count Dooku's name. Every, somebody that character's age would remember the Separatist uh, army stuff going on. You know, in even not just that age, but I mean, it's it's shows like you know a little bit of the timeline. I feel, and I, I really did appreciate that. Um, I feel like they went cheesy on the whole dark saber thing. I mean, he still looks awkward wielding it, but it, it's cheesy. It's just like, okay, here you go. It's like, you could have done that three episodes. You didn't have to wait for, for that point all of a sudden. And just like, it felt felt like a, um, just uh, an easy way to finish off that whole drama. You know. Yeah. That's a good point. But, I, I, I don't know. still I mean, feel like all those men... It made sense, but at the same time, it's like, I, I don't, I feel like season three, and, I, and we'll talk about more about this later, season whole, I just feel like season three is kind of like, you have Lazy different people writing. working different timelines, or working different story arcs, and they're trying to make it all mesh together, they're like, you got one one story arc here, one story arc here, and they're trying to zipper them together, and it's like, well, what the hell are you guys doing? That's how I feel, but we'll talk more about that later once the season thir- season is in. But yeah, that's how and I felt. Since so, do. Yeah, well, that and just our season three review. So, yeah. uh, anything else to add about uh, this latest episode? No. I mean, I, uh, I hope the next episode's got some crazy battle action like the one before, see, or at episode five. So then, what would you rate this on the Centometer? I'm gonna give it like a seven point five. Like it was, it was good, but it wasn't great. I mean, it had me, me laughing at some parts. Had you burping at a few? Yeah, I, I was and growling I, over here. <laughs> that was my displeasure at your answer. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no. Okay, seven point five. That's not bad. How um, did you get it? I honestly, uh. I'd give it uh, around a five, if, if not even lower. But right now, I'd say a five, because like, some of the stuff I did like in it, like I said, the bringing up Dooku and stuff like that. But overall, just it, it just felt, it just felt, like I said, like too many other things. Like I was, We were lo- watching I Am Robot in a D&D game. Or I, Robot, excuse me. I, Robot in a D&D game. I mean, when's, when's Will Smith going to pop up? You know, it's, it, he's going to slap Jet Black and keep your name. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so. I need you to find the error in these codes. Hey, droid. <laughs> nope. Hey, droid. <laughs> What's the three laws? Um, but, yeah, so it's just, uh, yeah, not. Wife's name say, out your mouth. I would say that's honestly the least impressive episode I've seen so far. At least, the you know, to the one that we kind of talked about with Sidetrack with the. With the spy, for lack of a better word, at least that had some intrigue that was related to something. You knew something was going to come out of this. That whole side story is kind of like, I don't know. But but that's my two cents. And we've heard Josh's two cents. So let us know your two cents. Uh, Thank you.